In this video, we'll give a quick overview of how to get up and running with Cherry Audio Voltage. Now, it can run as a standalone or as a virtual instrument in AU format on Mac or in VST format on Windows. And here you can see I'm running it inside Logic, and I can open this up as a standard virtual instrument in Logic. So this is what Voltage looks like when you first open up the plugin. As you can see over here is a big empty area. This is where your modules will be. And probably the easiest way to get underway is to listen to presets. So if we go up here, this is the preset browser, and you click on that guy. And the top level of the hierarchy is what we would call a collection. And if you click on that down arrow, you can see all collections will show all of them. Core presets are voltages included presets. Uh, these electro drum presets, this is from the electro drum collection, which you may or may not have. This is a whole set of modules devoted to electronic drums. And over here are user presets, which I shouldn't have to explain. <laughs> um, so going to our core presets right there, here we have a bunch of categories over here, which again should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if I click all presets here, it just shows everything and we can scroll over and see them all. And here it subdivides them into categories. You can click on a preset and play it. Now up here is what we call the I.O. panel. That's the input-output panel. And perhaps the first thing you want to know about is this guy, which is the volume, which does what you think it does. Uh, so if everything's blasting or too quiet or whatever, you can adjust appropriately right there. So the presets should be pretty self-explanatory. You can go forward and backwards in the presets. You can save presets over here by hitting save if you make modifications, and it will ask you which collection to put them into. You can select a category over here, and of course you can name it over here and press save. Now that we've talked about browsing presets, let's dig in and talk about how to use voltage to make your own sounds. Now I'm going to start by initializing everything to a blank slate, and the easiest way to do that is to hit the new button over here, and it'll ask you if you want to save your work if you've messed with anything. So in this case I'm going to say no, because I don't need to save this. So now let's talk about some of the controls. Up at the very top over here, we have what's called the I.O. panel, which is the input-output panel. And this is always going to be here no matter what. This has a CV out section over here, which is basically everything that's coming from your keyboard controller. So when you hit a note on your keyboard, it's going to have a pitch control voltage coming out here. It's going to have a gate telling you you're holding down a key, uh, a quick trigger, velocity information, and volts, and so on and so forth. You can also offset the octave coming in here, and you can see the little lights light up. And you have single multi-trigger mode, which specify the behavior of what happens when you hit more than one key at a time, because it's playing it as a mono synthesizer. Over here we have a MIDI jack, I'll explain that more later. Here we have a transport control section, and this lets you use your DAW to control things happening inside voltage. Here's the audio in from host section, this lets you use external audio routed in from your DAW. And this is the main output section. Should be pretty self-explanatory, as mentioned. Master volume, um, VU meters, master outputs, and these go back directly into your DAW. So whatever's going to the master outputs would go to this fader here like any other plugin. There's a limiter built in, which is just like a peak limiter. So if you have a loud patch, it doesn't blow the roof off. And here we have an auxiliary out section. And these let you use extra outputs and your DAW which can in turn be routed to physical outputs on your audio interface if you like. Over here we have the performance section, and I'm not going to get too deep into this right now, but these are assignable controls that can be attached to pretty much any knob function in any of the modules. Same thing with the buttons over here. You can name them. You can also assign external hardware controllers to control them. These are very flexible and very fun. We'll get into those at some other point in some other video. In this column over here, we have all the available modules. All the modules are categorized down here, so it's easier to find modules. If you look up here, it says all right now, and that's everything, but that'd be a lot to scroll through because there's 77 in my personal installation. So for example, if I hit sources, it only shows the modules that make waveforms or noises or that kind of thing. You can see the other categories down here. For example, processors are things like filters or EQs or things that alter voltages. Controllers are things like sequencers. Utilities are kind of everything else, usually things that don't make any noise of their own. And effects are what you think they are. <laughs> They're actual effects, choruses, reverbs, that kind of thing. Uh, in development are things we're working on, and you probably won't have that in your install. 
Now I'll demonstrate how to make a basic patch in Voltage. I'll begin with an oscillator, and you can add this by dragging and dropping, or you can hit the Add button over here, or you can double click. You can freely move this in the cabinet anywhere you want, and if you want another row in the cabinet, you can just drag down over here and it'll automatically make a new row. So I'm going to move this back over here. And now I'll add a filter, and I can search for it here. I can also type up here. I can type FIL, and it will narrow down all the filters. So here is my filter. This is the standard voltage filter. It's 24 dB per octave or 12. It does low pass, band pass, and high pass. And I'm going to hit the little X up here to get rid of the, the search term. And now I'll add an envelope generator. I usually find modules by typing the first few letters, but, but you can also do it by hitting the categories over here to narrow things down. All right, now I'm going to add an amplifier. And this is actually a VCA module for those of you familiar with analog synthesis terminology. And now I'm going to wire everything up. So we'll start by routing the pitch CV over here and I'm clicking and holding here, and then I'm going to let go of it. And If you look, I'm holding down the mouse right now. You can see these are all grayed out, and the reason these are grayed out over here is because these are outputs, and you can't plug an output into an output. But all the possible input destinations are shown normal, and if I let go of it, the cable plugs in. Now I'm going to route a gate signal over here to the envelope generator. And also I should point out that you can change cable colors up here, and you can also change the cable color by right-clicking over here on specific cables. Also, every output on voltage has a built-in multiple, which is super-duper convenient. So if I wanted to plug this gate into multiple destinations, if I just single-click on it, the six-jack multiple opens up, and I can route another cable. I don't need that right now, so I'm going to grab this and just drag it to nowhere, and it'll make the cable disappear. So now I've got my pitch and gate routed. So now I'd like to route a waveform output to the filter, so I'm going to click on the square wave into the audio in of the filter, and I'm going to take the low pass out into the amplifier input. And now the important part, I need to take the final output of the amplifier and route it into my DAW. And I do this by routing up here to the main out to host, and if I just use the left jack, it's mono, as you can see right there. I'm going to turn this down to make sure it's not blasting. So now the basic audio is routed, and if I open up the gain on the amplifier, you can hear the oscillator, and I can play notes on the keyboard. But that's not a very convenient way to play music, so we'll turn that gain back down, and we're going to use this envelope generator to control the amplifier. So I'm going to route this cable from envelope out to CV in, and now when I play, the gate will go to the envelope generator and open it up. So I can use the envelope controls to set my amplitude curve. And I can adjust the filter, resonance, and so forth. And we have a patch. If you want to save the patch, you can press the Save button over here. You can select which collection you want it to go into. I'm going to choose User Presets. I'm going to choose uh, MS Patches. That's me. And we'll call this Test Patch. And now I can hit save. And if I go into my preset browser and I look into MS Patches, here's Test Patch right there. Now, if you're familiar with classic analog modular synthesis, you'll know that most modular synthesizers are strictly monophonic. In other words, you can only play one note at a time. And if you're using the CV section over here, that's how it works. One pitch CV and one gate CV when you're playing the keyboard. But Voltage has the unique and awesome capability to play polyphonically. And the way we do that is using the virtual MIDI jack up here. So I'm going to modify this patch to be polyphonic. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this regular oscillator. I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit remove, and you can see that the module and its cables disappear. And now I'm going to use the super special poly oscillator over here. You can also see that the modules move out of the way, which is very convenient. And instead of using the pitch and gate to control the poly oscillator, I'm going to use the virtual MIDI jack. So you just grab one of those, and plug that in. And also the six-way multiple works on the MIDI jack as well. But now I don't even need this gate anymore. And the poly oscillator is actually self-contained in that it already has a basic envelope generator and amplifier built into it. So I really don't even need these guys. So I'm going to actually draw a box around these guys, and it's going to select both of them. You can see they're highlighted in yellow. 
and now I'm going to delete both of them. And for now I'm going to throw that filter over there. I'm just going to take the output of this guy and put it right over there. And now we have a polyphonic synth. And if I wanted to use a filter, I could plug that in. I'm going to use a bandpass filter this time. So one of the best features of Voltage is that it allows a lot of freedom as far as moving modules around. Uh, you can easily swap things around once they're already in a rack. So for example, if I wanted this amplifier to be, say, over here, I literally just grab it and drop it. Voltage is real smart in terms of aligning things. If I move a module next to another module and I drop it, it knows to snap right into place. Or you can separate modules. You can also highlight multiple modules at once and move them around. If you do, it'll snap them together, or you can move them as a little group. You can also click in a blank space and select align modules left or right. So if I wanted to pull everything over like that, that's really handy if you have a bunch of modules that are all kind of sitting willy-nilly. Just remember to click in a blank space to do that. Align modules, left, bam, all together. You can also select a bunch of modules by drawing a box around them, as I've been doing, and you can see that they get highlighted in yellow, and you can take that whole mess and move it around. You can move it down to a different level of the cabinet. And by the way, you can add as many new cabinet rows as you like. You can right-click in a blank area and say Add Cabinet, and there's another row of cabinet, and I can drag modules out, or I can move existing modules into that. And you've probably also noticed that the cables all stay where they're supposed to be, which is great. They travel around as needed. So really, really flexible as far as moving modules around. If you want to make more space on the screen for modules, you can use these buttons over here to hide and show the library column over here or the performance knobs if you're not using them. So I can click that, it'll disappear. And I can click this, and the performance knobs will disappear. So that's really simple, it just hides and shows.